I'd like to welcome you all back to another session where we're going to discuss the changes that will affect registered electrical contractors with the introduction of the wiring rules IS, Irish Standard 10101. And once again joining me, we have John Cotter, Safe Electric Inspector, yes, and Seamus Green, Safe Electric Inspector. So we hope we're going to give you some uh, more informative information to help you going forward. Now that we're talking about distribution boards, there are uh, also some changes, rule 421.7, uh, recommending the use of arc fault detection devices in uh, domestic premises. That's right, Dave. Um, arc fault detection is going to be very new to a lot of people. You'll sometimes hear them referred to as AFDD, which is arc fault detection device. Um, real good initiative to start putting into installations. They're going to be quite expensive to start with. What is arc fault detection? Um, in the distribution board, and whether it's commercial, industrial, agricultural today, we, we have two uh, typical types of protection devices. One would be short circuit or overload protection done by an MCB or a fuse, and then we have an RCD, residual current device, which is looking for earth faults. But if we had a loose connection, and that could be in a trailing socket, it could be the back of a switch, it could be in a junction box in the attic, that's not going to be picked up by, by either, either of these of two devices. devices. Yeah. Yeah. And it, this is a fire hazard. Now, so there is a recommendation now, it's, it is a recommendation coming into the rules that we look for arc fault detection. And these are going to be, uh, they're specifically mentioning different types of buildings, yeah. whether it be sleeping accommodation, places where there could be combustible. We think about, I suppose, woodworking shops and places Art like galleries. that. Yeah, art galleries. Art galleries. And, yeah. and then uh, museums, places with irreplaceable artifacts. Yeah. It could be very important to be using them in them. So there are going to be recommendations to, to come in, but a really, really good device to, to, to be starting to install. It's important to, rec to remember that at the moment in this edition of the wiring rules, this is a recommendation. And as a registered contractor, it will be important to document that you have offered or recommended that these are included yeah. in the building or in the infrastructure of, of the building. Yeah. Uh, if your customer declines to use them, well, there's nothing you can do about that, the end customer at the end of the day. Ultimately, it is a recommendation, not a rule. Uh, and the new rules also deal with surge protection, which I don't think was even hardly mentioned in the old rules. So could you, yeah, Dave, could you fill us in on that, John? Yeah, about? very similar to the arc fault detection, whereas I suppose we're recommending this to a client. Surge protection in the fourth edition was a recommendation that we should have always been making to our clients, um, especially now with the amount of electronics that have been introduced into domestic, commercial, and industrial settings. So slight change now with the IS10101, whereas if we are not introducing storage protection, we now have to carry out a risk assessment. This risk assessment is identified on rule 443.5. It is a simple equation, which involves getting a measurement from your meter location back to the transformer, and you input this inf information into the two small equations, and this will then give you your calculation whether that search protection is required or not required. Would there be an example of this, John? Like an example, say for the everyday electrician, you know, that's maybe yeah. hasn't done the equation since he maybe was in his, his, his phase six of his yeah, well again, we, not we, something we they've done every day. But it, maybe could you elaborate maybe a wee bit more on how they can do that equation or how, how is it put together? This, this, this equation is actually well illustrated on IS10101. Really well illustrated. With it, it's a very simple guide and we can put it up here on the screen. Yeah. What sort of numbers are they looking for there? So what, what okay, so to, with, to with get this calculation, what are we looking for? So with the calculation, they're looking for three different things. One is the distance from the meter back to the mains transformer. Right. Then we take into consideration flash density. It'll be important, John, to know the physical distance from the transformer yep. to the uh, distribution board in the installation. Yeah, this is the main key to getting the calculation on whether you require uh, surge protection, is having this distance. Once you have this distance, all inputting all the other relevant information into the equation is all located on rule 443.5. Would I be right in saying as John as well, that you're, as well as this distance, we need to know whether it's overground or underground, yep. or it might even be part of both. It could be coming across two spans of a pole and then running underground. There is a difference there. There is a there? difference, yeah. yeah. So, the, it, it, so we could be looking for two different distances. Good. So one underground to the pole, 
up the pole and then back towards the transformer. Right. Yeah. So that's these are the distances then we need to input. Into Sounds a little bit complicated, but it is fairly simple it's to do. It's very simple. It is very simple. And, very you get simple. Get and the yeah. bottom line is, depending on the result of the calculation, mm -hmm. that will tell you whether you need to use storage protection or not. Correct. But it's always a good idea, the default position. Just put storage protection in. That would be the far easier thing to do here. You could do all these complicated uh, calculations, mm. but it'd be much easier. And it's always a good thing. It's never the downside to yep. using storage protection. important change to the rules is the omission of the requirement to bond, uh, to use equipotential bonding on metal sinks or kitchen sink draining boards. Do you want to elaborate a bit more on yeah. that, Seamus? Yeah, everybody's going to be happy about this one. Uh, <laughs> nobody so. was yeah. pleased. I think I, I, I've heard it so many times, how do you bond these sinks or whatever. So yes, uh, Dave, the bonding of sinks is a thing of the past. If you're wor working completely to IS 10101, if you're still working on the fourth edition, we talked earlier about yeah. cable, RCD protection and stuff, if you, you need to apply all these things as well. So if you're finishing your house to the fourth edition, you haven't decided to apply the fifth edition yet, you still need to bond your sink. But up until then, at, w at the end of that, yeah. the fifth edition won't require it. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody for looking in here today. Thanks very much to John Cotter and Seamus Green Thanks, for joining me. Thanks, we hope we've given you some informative information and we are gonna have a few more of these uh, webinars to try and help you guys deal with the new changes to the wiring rules. So thank you very much. about the new allowed method of carrying out the erroneous test under IS 10101. This used to be a pre-connection test done basically using continuity, but it's now going to be either a pre-connection test using continuity or a post-connection test using voltage. I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out this test using the voltage method, which is a much easier and more accurate way of carrying out the test. This board, post-connection test, the building is energized and the power is on. I'm going to remove the cover off this board. 
and I'm now going to switch on all the circuits in the installation. There's the main switch on, sockets, RCBO, lighting circuits on. All circuits have to be on at the beginning of this test. If you leave a circuit off, you potentially are not testing the entire installation. So all MCBs, all RCDs, all RCBOs into the up position. We have our meter set for voltage, and we're now going to clip the probe, one probe, onto the main neutral terminal. OK? We're going to check that the meter is operating, so we go to the main switch, and it should read the voltage, which is 227 volts here today. OK? Now, to carry out the test, we put the voltmeter at the top of any of the MCBs in the installation. Now, all the circuits are on, we go to the top of this circuit, and we'll expect to get 230 volts. And there we go, 227 volts, which is the voltage here today. We now turn off this MCB, and the voltage should drop off. This now proves that this circuit is not interconnected with any other circuit. If it was interconnected with another circuit, it would remain at 228 volts. So the fact that it has dropped off indicates that there is no erroneous connection on that circuit. We can now leave that MCB off and move on to the next MCB. It actually makes no difference to the test if you turn it back on again, but if you leave it off, at least if you have to stop your test halfway through the sequence, you know where to start up again if your phone rings or you get distracted. So we've now we go into the next breaker, measure the voltage. Again, it reached 227. Turn off the MCB, drops to zero. We go into the next breaker, which is the third socket circuit, reach 227, turn off the breaker, it drops to zero. The next device is the sockets RCD, so we can just leave that on. So we've now tested all the socket MCBs. This is the RCD that's protecting the socket circuits. We can leave that turned on, we're not testing that. We now go to the first of the lighting MCBs. This is a 10 amp. We'll read 227 volts. Flip off the breaker, should go to zero, and it does. We ne next one again, 227 volts. Flip off the breaker, should go to zero, and it does. And the last circuit we have to test is actually the bathroom RCBO. We only test the live pole in the RCBO. 227 volts. Flip off the RCBO, and it goes to zero. We have now confirmed using the new voltage method that there are no erroneous connections between circuits in this electrical installation. That means that each circuit is fed by one MCB and one MCB only. The principle is, if you had a second MCB feeding one of the circuits, it would have remained at 227 volts even when we turned off the circuit breaker.